There's power in it. So let me get to this, let me get to this word. I, I want to, this is part two in the series we're calling Rebirth and Rebuild. All month, that's what you're going to get. Rebirth and Rebuild. Everybody say, Rebirth and Rebuild. Rebirth and Rebuild. So November the 10th of last year, the Lord spoke these words into my heart. And I'm still chewing on it, still digesting it, still trying to give it to you. It's time to rebirth, and it's time to rebuild the church. So whether you like this or not, the COVID is out there. But God is still here. Any person, any people that's got any, any virtue at all inside of them is going to have to reevaluate, <laughs> relook at your life and say, man, where am I at? And how many of you know it's okay to rebirth and to rebuild, rebirth and to rebuild, rebirth and to rebuild? So what, what does rebirth mean? What does rebirth mean? It means, I love this, it means that you're just starting to flourish. I love this. You're going to start increasing after a decline. I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. We're going to start increasing all after a decline. How many of you know that most churches have been cut slick in half? Most churches' finances have been cut. But God's still on the throne. The only hope that we have this morning, can I just interrupt and give you a quick commercial? The only hope that we have, his name is Jesus Christ. He is sovereign. He is God. He didn't wake up and say, oops, this morning. He knows you by name. He knows the hair on your head. He knows it all. How many of y'all are thankful we got a God that don't drop you off? I'm so thankful for that. I actually believe that, by the way. I believe that. So in other words, it's an endless cycle of birthing. <laughs> it's an endless cycle of birthing. And how many of you know, especially if you're a woman, you know if you're pregnant or not? And you know when you go up into birth, most men know it too because the wife want to kill them. You ever do this to me again? Y'all, how many of y'all had that word before, you know? It's, a, it's an endless cycle of birthing. So in other words, Elkhorn, listen to me. I've, I've never figured this out, and maybe God will give me the blessing to write a book on this, but we're constantly rebirthing. Constantly rebirthing. Constantly. It's an endless cycle of rebirthing. What does rebuild mean? Here's, here's something crazy. It means to replace, re-strengthen, reinforce, revise, reshape, <laughs> reorganize. In other words, it's an endless cycle of ministry. How many of y'all have ever said this before? How come they get saved and they, they never stay? How come there's an open door? I'm going to help somebody here this morning. I finally figured this one out. How come they come and they go? They come and they go. They come and they go. They come. Watch this, y'all ready? I'm going to miss y'all up because some of y'all ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. But it's truth. It's called endless cycle of ministry. There will be new people. Watch. I'm trying to help because this is going to solve a lot of problems. We will always be rebirthing and rebuilding. There'll be new people come. There'll be old people go. There's an endless cycle of ministry. And it helped me. It helped me because you know why? I used to feel responsible for closing the door. And now if God said, Brian, you're not, you're not the hinges on the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the hinge. I am the knock. I am the, well, I bless them going in and I bless them coming out. It's an endless cycle of ministry. And that should help Elkhorn Baptist Church. Because guess what? All her life we've dealt with that. And God finally gave me the revelation. Brian, watch. Y'all in here. You're constantly going to be rebuilding. You're constantly going to be rebuilding. Now watch this. I don't like that. Because I want them all. But if God says, you know what? <laughs> I didn't design the church for you to get them all. So listen to me. very It's an endless cycle of ministry. So if you have your Bible, I'm really excited to give you this word. How many of you are glad you come to church today? Man, I'm glad y'all are here. Thank y'all for being here. Genesis chapter 11, verse 5 through 7. This is going to be it. This is so good. Holy Ghost speak. Genesis chapter 11, verse 5 through 7. New Living Translation. I want to read now, love. So Good, it's on the big Bible, big screen up here too. But the Lord came down. Notice it says he came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Be careful you're not building a church based on you. Ooh. I'm going somewhere. It's going to be so good today. Thank you all again for being here. He said, look, he said, I love this. 
The people, the unbelievers, watch this, are unified. They're united. And they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. These were unbelievers, by the way. Come, let us go down. Watch what he says. Come, let us. What is he talking about when he says, come, let us? When well, Genesis chapter 1, he says, let us. He's talking about the, 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 the unity. He's talking about the Trotarian God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. When you get God, you get Jesus. When you get Jesus, you get the Holy Spirit. So when he said, let us go down, what he was saying, Jesus, Holy Spirit, let us go down. They're together. They're one. Because there's a lot of confusion in, in this chapter here. But I want to I clarify it. And confuse the people with different languages. Then, watch what he says. Once we confuse them, confuse them, they won't be able to speak the same language. He says, then they won't be able to understand each other. Wow, it's going to be so good. Church, God knew, God knew if he did not stop and confuse the, listen to this, the unified non-believers. Everybody say non-believers. And he knew if he didn't stop them, if he didn't confuse them, that whatever a non-believer set their mind to do, nobody couldn't stop them. So what God's spoken to me, William, and this is so powerful, and I want to get this in your spirit today because God's really, really speaking right now. God spoke this to me. He said, unified unbelievers, this is so good. Unified unbelievers have more power than disunified believers. Um, listen, lean in. These were people building a tower from earth to heaven. God himself, along with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, looked down and said, these unbelievers are doing something that nobody else has ever done. I feel the Holy Ghost. He said, if I don't stop what I'm doing, if I don't go down and stop them and confuse them, them non-believers will do anything that they want to do. So what God spoke to me is that unified, put it back up there, unified unbelievers have more power than disunified believers. Did y'all get that? Because I'm not going forward until we get this. Listen to this. So here's what this tells me. We can all be Christians in here today. We can all be believers in here today. But if we are not unified, there will never be no power. You can come to church all your life. You can sit beside the same person. You can quote the Bible. You can be in leadership. But if you are not unified, there will never be no Holy Ghost power in that. Do you imagine what, what would happen if we in here today would just unify, start speaking the same language? What God spoke to me was this. If Elkhorn Baptist Church, and I love all the other churches, but God's speaking to me about us. If we start coming together and unifying, start speaking the same language, thus saith the Lord, Whatever we set our minds to do, I feel the Holy Ghost. Nobody, nobody, nobody will be able to stop her. <laughs> preach that, preacher. I think I will. What's wrong with the churches today? She's disunified. Come on. She's, dis, she's disunified. That's why, that's why the Bible says, listen, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30. I love this. One can put a thousand to flight. And two can put 10,000 to flight. How many can 300 put? That's why the Bible says, I feel it. Come on, feed me. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 18, 18, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. But there's a prerequisite to all this. Look at this. There's something that's added to this. We forget about verse 19 and verse 20. We forget about verse 19 and 20. Watch this. You can't have verse 18 until you get verse 19 and 20 down. I'm so glad that God works backwards sometimes. I'm so glad that God messes us up on a Sunday. What does verse 19 and 20 say? Y'all ready? This is so good. This is so good. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth, how many of y'all on earth? 
We're here on earth. Watch what he says. Agree about something. I didn't even say it, did it? Two of us on earth unify, start speaking the same language, whatever you agree about and ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Four, two, or three are gathered in my name, then there I will be with them. Y'all hear me? Because I'm trying to speak a word. I tell you the truth that if anybody, anything, anyone comes together, watch, touching and agreeing, the Tower of Babel, they were non believers. They knew God, but they didn't know God. They come together and they started agreeing and touching. We're going to build a tower. And we're going to do whatever it takes. We'll go behind closed doors. We'll do whatever it takes to build this tower and touch heaven. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of churches that still think that they can build the same tower. I'll do what I want to do. I'll live the way I want to live. I'll act the way I want to act. I'll go where I want to go. I'll date who I want to date. I'll marry who I want to marry. And I'll still touch God. I interrupt that commercial today. No, you will not. There's only one name under heaven that a man shall be saved. And his name is Jesus Christ. Somebody get him praise. It's all about God. It's all about God. It's all about God. It's what I'm preaching about. Listen, Satan's number one job. Even outside of stealing, killing, and destroying. His number one job, y'all listen, is to divide Christian believers. To divide Christian believers. And I'm going to say something, and this is really good preaching. <laughs> when a Christian attacks another Christian, mm, 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 in front of a non-Christian, that is the spirit of Babylon. So when a, when, when a believer attacks another believer in front of a non-believer, that is the spirit, the same spirit of Babylon. Preach that, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So the church is disunified. We're not speaking the same language. We're not speaking a language. And here's what I'm testifying. We're blessed here. We've seen 40-some baptism salvations in 2020. We're blessed, but there's more. Don't ever settle for just 40 when there's so much more that God wants to do. And I'll tell you what's going to happen here at Elkhorn. Y'all might as well buckle in. When we unify and we come together... And we start speaking the same language. You know what's going to happen? We're going to have an upper room, great awakening moment once again in the history of the United States. The fire will fall. Somebody say, thank you, God. The tongues will come. The miracles will come. The blind shall see. Well, Brian, why are you getting so happy? Because I'm looking at a unified church. There's dynamite in here. We're holding the dynamite in our hand. Somebody light the wick. Somebody light the wick. Come on, somebody light the wick this morning. You say, Brian, how, how's that going to happen? I'll tell you how it's going to happen. When red and yellow, black and white come together in one place, touching and agreeing, start making his name great and not the church name great. You know what'll happen? Revival. You know what will happen? You'll start feeling yourself rebuilding. You'll start feeling a new creation, hallelujah, rising up in you. The things that you used to be able to do, I feel it, you're not going to be able to do it. Why? Because you're a new creation. You serve a creator that loves you. And you make his name great. I just tell everybody, listen to me. I'm not here to make Brian Rafferty's name great. I'm here to make Jesus Christ's name great. I'm not here, watch, I'm going to have, listen, I'm not here to make Elkhorn Baptist Church's name great. I'm here to make his name great. And I'm telling y'all, when we come together making his name great, revival will come. Revival will come. Revival will come. Hallelujah. We need unity back in the church. If a non-believer 
non-believers, y'all think about this. If non-believers can come together and agree and start speaking a language, one language, and build a tower from earth going all the way to heaven, what more can we do as believers? Listen to me, I'm calling the latter rain forward today. I'm calling, you can look at me sideways if you want to look at me sideways. I'm to a point in my life, watch this, I believe time is drawing nigh. Time is here. We ain't got time to jack leg around. We ain't got time to vote on the Bible. It's real. And I see a rain coming. It may be a small cloud, but it's full of rain. It's full of the Holy Ghost. It's full of signs, wonders, and miracles. And I speak it over everybody's life here today. I just need y'all to receive it. Brian, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I'm telling you, if the Bible's right, and which it is, the latter rain will be greater than the former. Here's something else that God spoke unto me that I've never seen in the Bible, and I just want to give it to you today. Is it okay if I give it to y'all? Here, here was the problem. <laughs> they wanted to gather, and God wanted them to scatter. Can I teach on this? Can I, can I teach on this just for a moment? They wanted to, to gather and make their name great. It's what it says in the Bible. They came together, they gathered to make their name great. That's what the Bible says. And God said these words. I'm going to come down. And I'm going to scatter you north, east, south, and west. I want you to repopulate the land. I want you to rejuvenate the land. I want you to make my name great. God, no wonder Matthew, he just told me this in Matthew 18. He says these words. No, I'm sorry. Matthew 28. He says these words. Go ye therefore. Go ye what? Yeah. Do you know today there are 6,809 known languages on earth today? 6,809 known languages. And we, we all about Kentuckians. Where in the world did 6,809 languages come from? God says, I did not save you that you would just gather Beulah, her four, and no more. That you would just come together, meet, and eat. He said, I died for you that you would scatter and make my name great. That's what he said. And it bothered him so much that the non-believers were coming together and gathering he says, I'm coming down, and I'm going to scatter that. I'm going to confuse that. So some of you need to scatter back to work. <laughs> so, we want everybody to look like us, act like us, smell like us. If they don't talk our language, we're out. We talk about everybody else. God says these words. I'm, I'm trying to help y'all. It's really blessed me when I read this this week. Because I have been gathering way too much. That's why, Karen, you're down at the Tyler County Detention Center. You're with messed up folk like us in here. They just got caught. That's a holy God day. <laughs> yeah. God says, I did not die that you would just gather together with people that look like you, act like you, talk like you. He says, I'm coming down to scatter you to the four winds of the earth to make my name great. Somebody help me preach. And that's what God is telling us. Some of y'all need to scatter back to your colleges, your dorm rooms, and make his name great. Some of you, including me, we need to scatter. Now, the religious people are going to be looking at me sitting there going, is Brian telling us? No, you didn't hear me. We, God says, I did not want you to gather. And become all about you. He said, I died. I'm getting ready to send my son, not for you to gather, but for you to scatter. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And so I just stopped by here today to tell somebody, we're going to make God's name great. Now, I know it sounds so elementary. But there's the power when, when somebody's sick in their bones and somebody's laying in the hospital down to nothing, 
Sometimes God will lay you down so all you can do is look up. But there's something about a believer when they get flat on their back and all they can do is look up and say, his name is still great. His name is still God. He's good all the time. I know where I'm going. I know where my faith belongs. I believe in Jesus. His name is great. I need somebody who believes what I'm preaching to stand to your feet and make his name great today. Come on, make his name great today. Come on, make his name great today. Praise him, hallelujah. Oh, you're a good God. You're a great God. Oh, I should have been dead a long time ago. But God, you saved me. You spared me. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost. He's a great God. He, he ain't just a good God. He's a great God. He, he's not just a good God. He's a great God. See, the problem, the problem Babylon, Babylonians, they just wanted to gather. They wanted to build four walls. And God's sitting there going, no, 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 no. Here's what God just spoke to me. One day he's going to regather us. Y'all hear me? Right now he scattered us. But one day he's going to regather. So, somebody write that down. I'm telling you, God... Created us to scatter now. Some of you are going on the mission field. Congratulations. Some of you are going into ministry. Congratulations. Some of you, your mission field is your job. God has scattered you and you don't like your job. What if I told you, you may not be at your job for you, but for someone, someone else. See, we have made the four walls about us. About us. What's Elkhorn believe? We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in God the Father. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe from Genesis to Revelation. We believe in the prophecy. We believe in the tongue. We believe the Bible. It is not up for us to debate what we believe and what we don't believe. God says just join in on what I've already done. We are trying. We got 131 denominations, churches here in Taylor County. We don't need no more. You dag on right. We are one body, one Lord, one Savior, one baptism, one King, and His name is Jesus Christ. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, um, yeah. and I love this too. The man, the men, the, the children of Israel who were non believers. They start building the, the, the Tower of Babel. Now, I know some of y'all think, I, I've got that. I, I've got that spirit, the spirit of Babel. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and they were building it up, Willie. Look what we're doing. Look what we're doing. Look what we're doing. And I love this, Jimmy, because God just like, he wrecked me this week. He said they were bragging on what they were doing, and God was looking down at them. Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they're like, God, we use blueprints and we got a, an IQ. And God, look what we're doing. And Jesus stands up and says, boy, that's really good. That's really good right there. He looked down on what man was doing. So here's what God spoke to me. What is over our head is under his feet. What is over our head is under his feet. God knows everything that's happening in the world today. He knows it. He knows about the inauguration. He knows that Joe Biden's coming up. Now, some of you are still cray cray. But I'm telling you, listen, it'll take the pressure off humanity. Relax. Let God be God. Quit building the tower. Ha! Ah. We're trying to build up humanity and we should be plundering hell and populating heaven. We're building towers. I'm telling y'all, why, why does churches fail? They're trying to build a tower. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. God was not impressed with man's creativity. 
God didn't look down and go, wow, great job. No, it upset him. Because man was trying to do something that only God could do. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Somebody say amen. amen. So here's what God, God, and God wasn't impressed with their theology. Here was their theology. I'll do whatever I want to do and I'll still get to God. <laughs> wrong, wrong. So someone spoke this into me this week and I want to give it to you. And I think this is really good. We need to build up our temples and tear down our towers. Y'all write that down. We need to build up our what? I am the temple of the most high God. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. He lives inside of you. God says, take care of your temple. And I'm telling you, we need to build up our temples and tear down our towers in Jesus Christ's name. Somebody give God praise on that one. That's a good word. That'll preach all by itself. So praise team, you guys come. So here's, what did God give us out of, out of this today? And you may have not got anything. If you didn't, you weren't listening. God wants to unify us. Elkhorn, lean in. Until we unify, there won't be no, there will not be no power. Until we unify and start speaking the same language, there will be no power. But when we unify and start speaking the same language, Listen to this, anything, go watch, anything, anything, anything that we set our minds to do, no man, no person, no government, nobody can stop God's people when they unify. I'm going to say it again. If the praise team is not unified with us, if a believer tears down a believer in front of a non-believer, you got the spirit of Babel on you. Stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stop it. I didn't pull a John Hagee on y'all and y'all didn't even realize it. Stop it. Not everybody can be a, a quarterback. Not everybody can be a lineman. Not everybody can be a wide receiver or a running back. But you got a team. You've got one head coach that calls the plays. And his name, so I don't mess y'all up. Some of y'all going, yeah, he goes again. Hey, no, I'm going to mess you up. The head coach is named Jesus Christ. He's calling the plays. But he does have an assistant. Hey, he'll have the assistant call the play to the quarterback. And what if, what if, what if, what if, what if the linemen say, because they big, they can do whatever they want to do. I ain't running that play. We tried that before. I hear coach somewhere. I don't know where you at, man of God, but I thought about you. Where's Haywood at? I learned this from you. And if we can get this, if we can get this in here today, it don't matter what song they play. I'm just going to worship. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, hey! It don't matter if I know that sermon, if I know I can quote this verse. It don't matter. I come to praise him today. Yeah. I'm not the head coach. I'm not a lineman. But God's given me word. <laughs> And I'm giving it to you today. And y'all got a decision to make. Worship team, y'all got a decision to make. Everybody here from the front to back, you got a decision to make. Are we going to unify and be a force to be reckoned with? Or is God going to say, oh God. See, we think we're exempt. We live in the Bible Belt. I think that makes God sick. 
bunch of religious people going around thinking they got everything, got all the money. What do we need God for? What do we need God for? We got a nice church, 925 seats. We're meeting our bills. I think sometimes God allows us to go down to nothing to see that something rise back up in us. Will you worship me without seats? When God sees a disunified church, I'm telling you, he'll come down. And people say, I don't believe that God's the author of confusion. Genesis chapter 11 proves you wrong, sir. He came down, confused them, and scattered them. And now he said, I'm bringing us back together. Because listen, we can learn a lesson from a lost person. If lost people, Sarah, can come together and unify, and we got Christians, my God, that don't even like each other. We got church people that can't even get along. No wonder we got the tire, the spirit of Babel. Come on talking to you. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to all of us. Either this Bible's real. Let's go home. Is that real? And I put my life on it. Some of you are linemen. Some of you are wide receivers. Some of you are running backs. Some of you are quarterbacks. But whatever God has called you to do, watch. Here's how a team wins a game. Whether they agree or disagree, they unify. If you come after Allison, you come after me. If you come after Ms. LaTanya, you come after me. You come after the deacons of this church, you come after me. You come after pastor, you come after me. If we get like that, come on, I'm preaching good. If we get like that, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. How many of y'all want a touchdown or you want to fumble? We got a lot of churches fumbling because they're building a tower. <laughs> and God says, I want you to build your temple. Notice from Genesis 11 was tower. First Corinthians chapter three is temple. Are you building a tower or are you building a temple? So I'm done. Y'all stand to your feet. How many of y'all got the word today? Anybody get the word today? Come on. Anybody get the word? I know it was tough. I know it was tough. I know it was tough. We need to hear stuff like this. Aaron, you're going to go to Bellarmine. You're a quarterback, right? You sure God didn't call you to be a wide receiver? What about a lineman? Why do we have quarterbacks trying to be linemen? Why do we got linemen trying to be a running back? And they big. They like 350, 400 pounds. Give them the ball. Oh, they may stiff arm you. But watch this. They can't run fast. <laughs> you kids, you know, I wish I could go. So listen, y'all ready? I love y'all. The secret to building God's kingdom. You ready? It's not how many people you got here. I feel this. It's not about really what we got going on in here. It's more about what we do out there. We are so introverted. Me, me. I don't like this song. I don't like this song. This person over there. I was there. Just said, I don't shut up. I was there. There they go. The altar again. Babel. Babel. You might, if you just work it really good, you'll start speaking in tongues really good right there. <laughs> so here it is. Do you have a Babylonian heart? Do you have a Babylonian heart? Are you building a temple or a tower? Right there it is. Are you building a temple or a tower? Let me ask you this. What language are we speaking at this church? This is so good. Are we trying to speak one language in here in 6,809 languages out there? I'm 
done. I feel a cold wave. 6,809 languages out there. And then, Greg, we honest to God think we're going to come to church on a Sunday morning and speak one. Ah! No! So, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. But I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak unity over this church. I speak one language over this church. I speak one team over this church. We love each other. We got each other. We stand with each other. No matter what. Good, bad, or ugly. Y'all know what unity is? It's when you and I tie. You and you and I tie. You and I T Y. You and I tie. Jimmy, when you and I tie. That's something. That's something. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you told me to do. I've spoke the word that you told me to speak. God, I thank you, Lord, that today, even with a hard word, you let it land on a soft heart. God, from the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom, may we unify. May we speak one language. God, may Elkhorn Baptist Church be your church, your temple. Not your tower, but your temple. God, I pray we take care of the temple and tear down the towers today. Lord, I believe this is a word straight from the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, take care of the temple and tear down the towers. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. It's up to you now. I've done what God told me to do. Take care of the temple. And tear down the towers. In Jesus Christ's name. This altar is open. You come. If you need Jesus, you come. If you got disunity in your life, you come. Y'all know, y'all know what would mess hell up? If we get unified here today. Let's get unified. No matter what. Tear down the tower. And build up the temple. In Jesus Christ's name. Let's go.